Do you want to know if better fish can live with tetras? The good news is that oftentimes the answer is yes. If you're like me, you love the idea of a community tank. The only problem is finding the right fish to live with your better. And if you love the look of tetras, then they may be the ideal fish. However, there are some rules you should stick to when introducing tetras to your tank, or your better may not stay so friendly. There are over a hundred different types of tetra on earth, so asking if a better can live with them is a broad question. There are a few common reasons tetras don't make good tank mates. For example, they often nip fins. As well as this, they're schooling fish, so if they swim into your better's territory, it may spell trouble. Here are five tetras that can often live peacefully with your better and three tetras you should definitely avoid. Neon tetras. First, one of the most popular tetra, neon tetras can be a great addition to your tank and a great tank mate for your better. If you plan on adding neon tetras to your tank, you're going to need at least six, but 10 to 12 is the ideal amount. At 10 to 12, their stress levels will be minimal as they'll be in a good size school. Neon Tetras make great tank mates because of their speed and where they spend most of their time. Your better will oftentimes choose territory near the top of the tank, which is great because Neon Tetras swim around the middle, which means they won't be butting heads all the time. And even if your better does act aggressively towards your Neon Tetra, it's extremely unlikely he'll ever get a bite because of their speed. If you plan on buying Neon Tetras, it's no small commitment. They can live up to five years and grow to one and a half inches in length. A neon tetra will need a temperature between 70 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH between 5 and 7.5. If you're not a big fan of neon tetras, then another great choice is ember tetras. Once again, one of the biggest reasons to consider ember tetras is the fact that they stay around the middle of the tank. So most of the time, apart from feeding time, they'll stay out of your better's way. And on the subject of feeding time, ember tetras and betters can eat most of the same food. So if you planned on feeding your better brine shrimp, bloodworms or daphnia, then your ember tetras will eat them too. You're going to need to have at least 6 ember tetras at a time, but preferably 10 to 12. Oftentimes, ember tetras will school with neon tetras. However, if you plan on adding both to your tank, you may need two separate schools in case this doesn't happen. Ember tetras are a lot smaller than neon tetras, growing up to 0.8 inches. This does mean that if one of them gets sick, there is a possibility that your better will eat them. An ember tetra will need a temperature between 73 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH between 5 and 7. Next are rummy nose tetras. Once again, while your better's territory will often be at the top or middle of your tank, rummy nose tetras will show around the middle or bottom of the tank. However, if you plan on adding rummy nose tetras to your tank, you should know that they are the biggest tetras on the list so you're going to have to make sure you give them plenty of swim room. At the very least, you're going to need to have a 20 gallon tank. And also, just like the other tetras, rummy nose tetras are schooling fish. So you're going to need to keep a minimum of six in the tank to make sure they're happy and stress-free. They'll need a temperature between 75 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH between 6.4 and 7. You can also try cardinal tetras. You should consider adding them to a tank as they're similar to neon tetras but larger in size. They are schooling fish, so make sure you get at least six and remember that they will need a larger tank. They'll grow up to two inches in size and live for five years. Lastly, cardinal tetras need a temperature between 73 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH between 5.5 and 7. Black neon tetras can also be a great choice. One of the reasons they make great tank mates is their lack of color. Colour often triggers aggression in betters, so this can easily be avoided with black neon tetras. Black neon tetras should be kept in a school of 6 to 12, and you should make sure they have plenty of room to swim. They'll need a temperature between 68 and 79 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pH between 6 and 7. There are also tetras you should avoid. One such tetra is the black phantom tetra. You'd think black phantom tetras would be great fish to add to your tank because of how friendly and docile they are. However, the biggest problem with black phantom tetras is the fact they spar or mock fight. This can often be over territories, and while it isn't a direct threat to your better, it does often stress them out and make them become more territorial in turn. If you're going to have black phantom tetras, then you should consider putting them in another tank. Also, black phantom tetras can often be nippy when they aren't in a large enough shoal. They need a temperature between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH between 6 and 7.5. Bleeding heart tetras are often known as being nipping fish, so they should be avoided. They are also incredibly speedy, which means that your better is going to have a hard time swimming away from them. 
However, this does also mean if you were going to get Bleeding Heart Tetris that are peaceful, they would be able to escape a better snipping. If you insist on getting Bleeding Heart Tetris, then you should definitely add a lot of plant life to your tank to give your better plenty of places to hide. You should also use a large tank and try to keep your better and Tetris from getting under each other's skin. Temperatures they need are between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the pH needs to be between 6.6 .6 and 7.8. Serpe Tetras are a fantastic starter fish and they look amazing, but you shouldn't add them either. The first reason you shouldn't add Serpe Tetras is because they are extremely nippy fish. They will often chase and nip fish that are slower than them, like your better. And to add to that, they also dislike fish that have flowing tails and are brightly coloured. As you can imagine, putting them in with your better will spell trouble for both fish. And lastly, Serpe Tetras will compete for food during feeding time, meaning your better may have a hard time not getting his food stolen from him. If you do want to keep them, they need a temperature between 72 and 79 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH between 5.5 and 7.5. How should you introduce Tetras to a better tank? It isn't advised to add Tetras or any fish directly to your main tank when you first get them, because if the fish you plan on adding are sick or carrying any illnesses, then they may infect the tank. This is especially true of a lot of Tetras. Before adding Tetras to your tank, you should always add them to a quarantine tank first. Tetras can often stress easily when being introduced to a new tank, which means they are more likely to develop an illness such as ick or velvet. When setting up your quarantine tank, you should add water from your main tank to acclimatize your Tetras better. This is also more beneficial than using conditioned water because your Tetra won't have to acclimatize twice. Using a quarantine tank is especially important if you order Tetras online. Tetras don't ship well, so if you get your Tetras from a local shop, it's well worth using a quarantine tank. How to minimise fin nipping. If you notice fin nipping on the signs, you can help minimise the chance of it happening again. The first thing to do is make sure your Tetra school is big enough. If fin nipping is occurring and you haven't got 12 Tetras schooling together, then try adding more Tetras. This helps reduce stress levels, keeping your Tetras calm. Also, fin nipping occurs more often if Tetras aren't getting enough exercise or can't roam enough. So if you're housing Tetras in a tank that's too small, then fin nipping may occur. If you think this is the case, then you should consider buying a bigger tank that's at least 20 gallons, and your tank should have more width than height when housing Tetras. If after all this, a Tetra is still nipping your better, the only thing left to do is rehouse it. You can either move the Tetra to a new tank, or if you have to, try and take it back to the pet store. But if you do this, don't expect a refund and they may still not make it. What should you do if your better is chasing Tetras? Sometimes it's not the Tetris that cause the problem, but your better. Betters may chase Tetras around the tank, in which case it can be hard to find a solution. If your better or Tetras have recently been added to a tank, then this chasing may pass once a better has established his territory. However, it's important to remember that betters are often fish that need to be on their own. If your better is chasing your Tetras or starts attacking them, then you'll need to remove him or the Tetras. There are two things you can do in this situation. The first thing is buying a tank divider. By doing this, you can place all your Tetras in one half of the tank and your better in the other. The only other option apart from this is move one or the other to another tank. And obviously, as a last resort, you can try and take your fish back to the shop. Here are some important things to remember. While you can try and house fish with your better, it may be impossible to house any with him. If you've never housed a fish with your better before, then you should have a backup tank ready in case he doesn't want any tank mates. When you're choosing Tetras, make sure they are adults. Even if your better is friendly, they're still opportunistic eaters. That means given the chance, you may still try to eat a small Tetra. Check to make sure that you aren't buying a sick Tetra either. You can tell an unhealthy fish by the way they act. If they appear to be isolated, lethargic, or showing clear signs of illness, then make sure not to buy them. And if you plan on adding Tetras to your tank, then they're going to need a minimum of 20 gallons. Make sure that your tank has a lot of width as well, and even though 20 gallons is the minimum, you should still aim for bigger, for a whole variety of reasons, including keeping the water more stable, reducing the bio load, and keeping fish happy. I hope you liked this video, and if you want to learn about other tank mates that can live with your fish, then you should definitely check out the Ultimate Better Tank Mate Guide. You'll learn about 68 different tank mates that can live with your fish, as well as fish you should avoid. And lastly, if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, have a great day.